Yo. What's up, man? What's, how you doing, man? Uh, what's going on, my bro? Chilling, man. Working. Uh, let everybody know who I got today. Special guest in the building. Yes. Uh, my name is Mr. Hamilton. Mm -hmm. I teach eighth grade math and a pre-algebra class in high school. I also tutor, and I'm also certified to teach math, English, and science from grades five to nine. Damn, yeah. wait, wait a minute. So you a teacher? Yeah, man. Oh, this is something different from my platform, yeah. man. You know what I mean? I ain't <laughs> yeah. even gonna lie to you. It's a little different from my platform. So you a teacher? Yeah. Um, where in the Bronx? In the South Bronx. Yeah. Oh man, in the hood. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, what type of um students you run across? Are the students um, do you know? Cause we gotta like a uh, I don't even know the word to, to say, but yeah. they look at our um community like you know a lot of our kids don't want to learn do, do, do the kids out here willing to oh, learn so first of all the even type of school it's a transfer a transfer school okay. middle school and high school most of the kids are over age mm -hmm. in high school they're undercredited mm -hmm. and most of the students i have especially middle school they've been kicked out of these charter schools and these prestigious schools mm -hmm. and most of the students as well they're like for example i have 17 year olds in eighth grade 18 year olds in eighth grade and sometimes 14 year olds in sixth grade like that's just to give you a you know a snapshot of what i what i deal with mm -hmm. and most of them like before i got here um you know they're just i'm from brooklyn you know what i mean so you know we all you know ragging the bronx and everything and this is the lowest the lowest um the the lowest performing district in new york city Damn. when i got here you know i was told that they, they're not used to taking tests and you know they get you know they get nervous and they give up, and that's because they're so used to failure. You're being kicked out of uh, multiple schools. If teachers call your house um, about negative things all the time, you know you start to give up. Mm. And what I came in here to let them realize is that you know it's not the end of the world. Like it's not too late for anything in life. I graduated high school at 19. Mm -hmm. I finished late, you mm. know. Um, but I was a, I was a student athlete. I played football at James Madison High School. I played at Long Island University. I played football there. I got a scholarship, you know, and I graduated high school at 19. Mm. You know, so it's not. It doesn't matter when you finish as long as you do finish. Okay. So I got students. My, a lot of my students, you know, um, I it's this is uh, you have to you have to come in and give your best every day. Mm -hmm. You know, I give these kids the same education they get at these charter schools, mm -hmm. at these prestigious private schools. The the work is rigorous. I don't I don't I don't. Um, I don't feel sorry for them because of their situation. A lot of them have, you know, they have rough situations at home, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, no one cares about your, your circumstances. Mm. People care about results. Mm. So that's the first thing I let them know. Like, I know you got it hard. I grew up hard, so I grew up in East New York. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, didn't, I, didn't really, I didn't really have everything I wanted growing up, you know, the fresh sneakers and clothes, but I had opportunity. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I had opportunity, people cared about me. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why I'm here right now. Right. So that's what I'm gonna give to you, and I'm gonna give you 100 percent every day. But you gotta put your your part in, mm. you know. So yeah. Wow, definitely, yeah. definitely. So, um, what's the students' age ranges that you deal with? Um, from 13 to 21. Damn. Yeah. All right, you got the you got the real the youth the youth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 13 to 21. Right. So, yeah. um, tell us some stories about like maybe what type of um, tell us some negative encounters you had and positive encounters. Tell us both. My first year, yeah. I almost got in a fight with a student. Oh my god! Yeah, like the student was, hit you. Nah, we it almost got to that point. Where we got in each other's face. Okay. You know, okay. but a lot of these, a lot of these, a lot of these teachers are afraid of the kids. So they don't, they don't, sometimes they don't want to take it there to to hold. You have to hold discipline, mm -hmm. and you, sometimes you gotta let students know that you know I'm the teacher, and it's gonna go like this with my class, and I can't let you do what you want to do because. What did I say to the other students? Mm. And some students, you know, they don't take that well, you know, right. because some of these students go through trauma at home, so any little thing triggers them. It's not even sometimes the teacher. Mm -hmm. They come home, they come to school mad, right? right? They got to figure out how they're going to eat. Mm -hmm. They got to figure out how they're going to put money in their pocket. Of course. The money to pay the bills. Right. So they come in to school with all of that, and, you know, they just angry at it. They, just, they don't care. Like, they just assume someone says something I don't like, I'm going to flip on you. And mm. that's pretty much what it was. I don't think it was nothing against me. But at the end of the day, you know, I feel like why it didn't get to that point, because we had a certain respect for each other. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. To a certain point, because it wasn't really about me. Right. But at the end of the day, I'm not going to, I'm human at the end of the day. And I'm from the same, I'm from the same place you're from. Right, you know right, what I right, mean? Right, like, right. So, yeah. Yeah. 
positive. From positive, mm -hmm. um, it takes a while for the positive because mm -hmm. in, in school with kids, it's, it's a delayed success. Like you might not see it today or tomorrow, it may be five years down the line, mm -hmm. 10 years down the line. So most of the students I have for two or three years, they change completely. Mm -hmm. You know, at first it was do rags in the, in the, in the classroom. Now they take their do rags off and their hood off and they come work. They, mm. pr they produce quality work. They go home and do homework. When, mm. I, when I got here, they wasn't doing homework. They wasn't giving homework. Right. They, they do homework now. They take tests. When I first got here, kids weren't taking tests on a regular. They take quizzes every week, tests every two weeks. Mm. So I got them on a routine, like the schools that they've been kicked out of or you know shunned away. Because mm. as we know, your education is dependent. The quality of your education is dependent on your zip code. Mm. You know what I mean? Like. The, explain, that, explain that. Explain yeah, that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Schools <laughs> get funding. The funding depending on the neighborhood they live in. Okay. So if you're in a low income community, your resources ain't gonna be a lot because the school doesn't have. They're not gonna get that budget mm -hmm. because the, the school the the area income is low. Okay. So they're not gonna get that budget like a Park Slope is gonna get mm -hmm. or a Lower Manhattan mm -hmm. or Midtown. Mm -hmm. Right. We have. I have. I have zero resources. Like this whole classroom. These curtains right here out of my pocket. You know, all these all these charts up on the wall and everything, out of my pocket. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I spent about maybe three to four hundred dollars a right. year. Right. You know, school supplies, books. I had to buy books, I had to buy pencils, pens. What? Everything, yeah. They we don't got no books? We give, we get, we get a certain amount of folders, certain amount of markers, and you know, the essential stuff, but it's not enough. Okay. You know, kids need books. Kids need folded. Um, books are kind of like they have book. We have a curriculum online, so mm -hmm. I have to print stuff out. But um, like things like this, where I could connect, I could connect this to my phone mm -hmm. right here on my iPad over there, and I could project a video to the smart board. This is mm -hmm. sixty dollars, mm -hmm. right? Everyone knows most of these kids are visual learners. Mm. They don't have everything on YouTube, mm. Instagram, or whatever. They like things visual. Mm. And sometimes I record myself teaching, hook it up to the phone so they can watch it on the smart board. So that way, they, they, love, they love watching something. Instead of me being up there and then boring them to death. Mm. And then when they're watching the video, I can walk around and help them individually. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's a great... That, yeah. That was very smart of you to, um, you know what I mean, try to... Yeah. Uh, you know, try to adapt to the environment. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Right here, um, like my aromatherapy. They come in, the room smells good. It feels welcoming. Mm -hmm. This classroom didn't look like this mm -hmm. before, I, before I got here. Right. Yeah, there's a lot of work put in. The first thing to, for, to kids to buy into what you want to do is to have a welcoming environment. Mm. Yeah, we in the hood. But why must it look like, why must it look like, like, you know, um, why must it look like, like a school that's in the hood? Mm. Why not make it like a palace, mm -hmm. you know? Get them used to the higher learning education. Mm -hmm. So when they go to college, it's not going to be a big shot. Oh, my God, we got nice chairs. Right. You know, we, you, know we, you should be used to doing that, you know, mm -hmm. seeing that. I went to James Madison in, um, in Marine Park. Mm -hmm. Schools in, at Bedford, you know, on Bedford Avenue in Marine Park. Yeah. Nice school, you know. No, I'm not, pretty I'm not good used over to, there, pretty yeah, good. Yeah, I'm not used to this. Mm -hmm. I try to bring that over here. Right. Yeah. Right. So, yo, so, like, how did the students... Um, do students, you know, do students like you or they don't like you? What, what do you guys say about like that type? You know, because some students don't like their teachers. Of stuff. course, of right, course. And right. what I tell them, I'm not here for you like me. Okay. You got to respect me though. Oh. That's, that's a whole, that's being like, and that's something to teach them. Mm. Don't, you don't, you shouldn't be one to walk around life being like, you want to be respected. Mm. Respect go a long way. Mm. Anything. So I go, I go play basketball with them on third period. Um, that's my, no, fourth period. That's my prep. On my free time, I go play ball with them. Mm. You know, we, we watch YouTube, we watch, um, we watch, you know, um, Vlad TV interviews on, on, um, on, on financial literacy. I, um, we do, we do, we looked up Master P one day mm -hmm. on how he, you know, how he, how he worked the music industry and changed it, where he mm -hmm. got that 80-20 deal. Mm -hmm. I showed him about finances, taxes, real estate. They learn more than just math in here because at the end of the day, yeah, this X plus, all this right here, like all this 5X plus 2, that's cool, you know, but you got to know what credit is. You know, you got to have some type of budgeting when you get older. You got to learn how to do that as well. You got to know how to, um, the process of buying a house, interest, 
tax. Mm-hmm. Got kids are graduating not knowing those things, mm. which is really important. Right. All this is, the kids asking all the time, why do we need this? To be honest with you, we need to get a piece of paper. Right. You need to get that diploma, and that diploma is, is pretty much what allows you to get a job. Mm-hmm. But the, the skills to get a job, knowing how to take an interview, learn how to dress for an interview, right? reading a contract, si- uh, signing contracts, understanding what's in that contract, they don't teach you that in school. So it got it. sometimes I take, I take the hit for it as well sometimes, but you got to take the hit to teach these kids to get them engaged in the class. They're not going to want to do 5X plus 2 every day. Mm. You know, have to do something to draw them in. I play music. I got my speaker right here. I got my speaker right here. I play music as long as it's clean. You know, um, I try to look for the clean albums. I play Young Thug, Chef G, stuff they ain't listen to. Mm-hmm. You know, um, oh, Wait, students in the Bronx listen to Chef? Yeah. They listen, <laughs> they listen to Chef G. They listen to Fabio. They listen oh. to um, they listen to Rod Swish. They listen to um, Pop Smoke. Listen Whoa. to all of them. Yeah, okay. yeah. All those drill rappers. Yeah. They listen to them. So that's all right. Yeah. All right. So I guess what I'm doing, interviewing the youth, tap into. Yep. The crowd I interview. Okay, that's good. That's a good thing because. You know, I get slack for doing that because a lot of older people or people that's into like, you know, that's kind of into the early 2000s yeah. sound. They oh, you don't know. You know, so I get slack for that. But I, the, I'm into what the youth into, I guess. Yeah. You know? Listen to this, man. But people are not going to want to hear. The youth moves the music. <laughs> Thank you. The youth moves the music. Whatever, yeah. they, whatever they listen to, that's what's popping. That's right. But regardless of what anybody think or say, <laughs> or, or yeah, we grew up on 50 Cent and G-Unit. But that, we got to move on. Mm. That's not what music is right now. We have to move on. The music is whatever the kids like, that's what's popping. Okay. It don't, it don't, it don't matter who else like what. Right. The youth, music, music. Because right now, right, a lot of the kids are 13 and 14. They're going to be into that till 21. Mm-hmm. These, this fan base is going to carry for seven, eight years. And then when they're 35, they're going to go back and want to listen to what they listened exactly. to when they was 18. Exactly. These kids put me on a little TJ, 2017. Shout out little TJ. Yeah. They, they were playing Resume, and I was like, you know, they kept playing all the time in Advisory. I'm like, what song is that? Mm-hmm. Over and over. And then two, three months later, it blew up. Mm-hmm. But they've been playing him here. Right. They've been playing him. Right. And I was like, all right, you know, is that, that's getting you to work, and that's getting you to come to class, and you're not on the streets. Mm-hmm. Do it, right. So, right. so what, um, so you're basically saying, like, you know, what do you think, you know, because you have a job at a school and all yeah. that, so I don't really want to say anything bad about school itself. That, yo, but, speak truth. All right, so yeah. do you think the school provides you with proper curriculum to make these kids in the Bronx yeah. come out able to compete with other races? Mm. The curriculum is there, but it ain't for us. Mm. It ain't for the language. Okay. You got to understand the people that make the curriculum not this color. Okay. You know, the language that is put in. Think about this, right? The teacher exams, the nurse exams, the, the lawyer exams, right? They're all made from the same company. Mm-hmm. Te- the, the reason why it's not a lot of minority teachers, especially black male teachers, because 43% of black uh, African Americans pass the certification exam, mm-hmm. right? 48% of Latina, um, Latino, um, Teachers pass certification exam. Seventy-two percent of Caucasian, um, Caucasian race pass the certification exam. Right. So while the while the student race is getting more diverse, the the um, teacher the teacher race is getting less diverse. Now, all right, this is a question. So does that mean that that race is more? Um, how can I say? Uh, um, better to teach then because they pass more that means they might be the, smarter what, the, what do you think the about issue, that the issue okay. with the with the state exam for the students and regents mm-hmm. and the teacher exam mm-hmm. that the language is not on the the language is not something that we recognize mm. a lot of the words like for example i tutored my, i tutored my cousin and they had a question on stocks mm-hmm. in seventh grade mm-hmm. like kids other kids with, with that financial opportunity may know what stocks is because they educated on it, but what 12-year-old kid from the hood know what stocks are? Okay. Right. How did you be able to answer that question? All right, but now for the teacher exam, mm-hmm. what, what a, like, you know, if more white teachers are passing, shouldn't yeah. they, you know, shouldn't we not look at it in no type of way because it means that they more, um, I guess, equipped to teach maybe. And that, and that goes with college readiness. Okay. Like, most of... You ever heard of the um, every, no, left, no Child Left Behind that? Yeah, of course. Pretty much what that is, they make, they want 100%, they want 100% mastery, mm-hmm. right? 
So to do that, they have to make the they have to dilute the work, water it down to get kids to pass. Mm. But when you dilute in the work, it's not you're not preparing them for college. Mm. So most of these kids graduate in high school, but they're not academically prepared for college. Mm. If you're not academically prepared for college, you may get through, but then you're not gonna be able to pass this exam if you want to be a teacher. Okay. You not so, have. You not. You don't have. So it starts yeah. from before they even want to be exactly. a teacher. All exactly. right. That's what you're saying. Exactly. All right. Fifty percent of students that that graduate in the South Bronx, out of those fifty percent that graduate, twelve percent are college ready academically. Mm. So all right. So teachers like you who add on, who may spend out their own pocket, yeah. add on. Y'all help them be ready college. That's what I'm. That's what I'm teaching for. Okay. College readiness, and if, and also. Yeah, people say college is for everyone. College is for people who want college. It's just mm. that. You know what I mean? If you want to go to college, it's for you. Okay. But what about those other kids? Mm. Do it for your parents. Mm. They spend all this money on your school clothes. They sacrifice. They work two jobs to support you and pay the bills. Do it for them. Mm -hmm. You know, at least do it for them. And I know you shouldn't do anything for anyone else. But at least should give you at least pay that back to your parents. Right. Or for you, if you if you don't even if you don't want to graduate for your parents. At least learn something from here that can help you in the real world. Mm. Do do something that can help you in the real world. Like uh, interview with Gucci Man mm -hmm. years ago on Vlad TV. He said, "I didn't really like school, but I paid attention to English because I wanted to be a rapper. Mm. I wanted to be a poet. So I, I took English real serious. Mm -hmm. You know, and look where he's at now. Mm -hmm. He used school for something that he wanted to do in the real world." Right. And that's I feel like that's what I try to get these kids. I try to meet everyone where they're at. All right, you may not want to go to school. All right, what do you want to do? Okay, I'm going to help you here, but just come here. If you come here, I can help you to get where you need to be. Mm -hmm. Everyone don't want that, though. Right. Everyone don't want that. Right. I'm not going to go out my way for every kid if you don't want it. Because right. I have, you know, if I have 50 kids, I can't go above and beyond for every one of them. How many kids do you have? Um, I say about 45 to 50 in like in four or five classes. It's a small school. Okay. Yeah. So, all right. So, say like this class when you teach this class. How yeah. many kids do you teach at one time? Um, my eighth grade class is about 15 to 20 kids. Okay. Yeah. Do you think that's overcrowded or harder for you to teach? Or no. should it be? Okay. Mm -hmm. Not at all. Okay. Because um, I have my, um, my classroom management is mm -hmm. second to none. Mm -hmm. When students, they come and get at 14, 15, they line up outside. Mm -hmm. You come in silently. You get work started. Once the class is easy to manage, you can have 100 people in here. Mm. It don't matter. Mm. It, once the class is ordered and structured, you're not gonna have no problems. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, but there are a lot of different learners here. Like I, not most of the students I get are level one students. What's that? Remember the state exam was level one, two, three, and four. Mm -hmm. Let's say nine out of ten students that I get are level one, which mm -hmm. is the lowest. Mm -hmm. Level three is passing. Mm -hmm. Last year we had our first level three student mm -hmm. since this school started in 2013. Wow. We had a first level three student. So it took me three years just to get students to that point. Mm. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, but I'm, I'm proud of it. Do you think, um, how long have you been teaching, first of all? It's four years. It's my fourth year. Okay. Do you think, um, like, say, like, sex plays a part, meaning, like, male or female to teach plays a part? Is it easier? Mm -hmm. do, do, do teachers, do children listen to, um, Male teachers or female teachers more? Which one you think resonate with the the yeah. black youth more? Personally, or me, the Latino, or do you know what I mean? The yeah, people yeah. of color or whatever. It depends term. on the female. Okay. It depends on the female, especially with this population. This is not a normal population. Right. These are kids that over age, that um, that that been through so much failure mm -hmm. that they at the end of the ropes with us. Okay. So you have to have a strong. You gotta have a strong individual, male or female, because you, okay, you, right, right. you can be male and be weak as hell. Yeah, right. Okay, that's true. That's true. So right, you gotta right, come right. in, but it's nothing. It's a different. It hits different when a strong male dominant voice hits them. Okay. Like, good morning. Mm -hmm. That's different from a. That's different from someone that has no confidence and comes in with a mellow, soft voice. Okay. With this, with this population, you gotta have someone that's hands on. Okay. And that's that demands attention. Mm. Someone, hey, yeah. that's different from you know. Hey, you know, uh, can you guys sit down, please? Okay, right, kids right. in the hood ain't respecting that. Right. Especially you know, growing up, you know, our parents always yelling. They they're not even yelling; they just loud. Mm. Hey, turn that music down. Right, right, like they right. used to that, you right, know. Right, right, right. Yeah. So, all right. So, see now, I hate to ask this, but yeah. I have to. 
when other people approach us in that way, is they wrong for doing it? Because they show a lot of videos on the internet where yeah. say like people from other backgrounds may approach our type of kids loud and aggressively. Yeah. So are they right for being loud and aggressive? Because they look, you understand what I'm trying to ask? Yeah. Okay. It depends. The difference between yelling at someone and then projecting your voice for everyone to hear you. Okay. Right? Okay. And with kids, you can't just yell at them and then they, you know, especially if they don't know what they did. Mm. Like if someone talking, hey, like Hey, stop talking. Right, right, right. I, I'm not going to do that. Okay. You know? All right. If, so, if I'm teaching, right? Like, if I go up on the board, I, I go up right now. Mm hmm so, If I'm teaching on the board, and I got two students talking right there, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to stop. Ready for everybody to face forward. Mm hmm Yeah. And that's it. Right. That's all I'm doing. Right. You know? Okay. Second time... While, while they're working, all right, let me talk to you outside real quick. Oh, right. Yeah, man, I know you got 30 more minutes, man. Like, for me. You know, mm -hmm. I, I told you twice, just chill out until the end of the period, man. Mm -hmm. And I got, I could talk to them like that because I built a relationship with them, playing basketball, uh, during lunch, talking to them about their interests. So it don't really take much for me to get them back on track. Okay. You, you got me? All right, cool. So hands, and he go back and do his work. Mm -hmm. Now, some kids, you know, this this morning, I had, this, um, you know, kids like they where they do rags, mm -hmm. and he skipped class because he, he didn't want to take off a do rag. Damn. Yeah, he skipped class. What if he didn't have a cut or something and you feel like comfortable or something like that? And that's why you take that time to go talk to them. When you, I, t I had to talk to him during my lunch, mm -hmm. my lunch period. Mm -hmm. I sat down with him. I'm like, listen, man, let's just take it a day at a time. Right. Right. Let's take a dead time and see what goes from there. You go wear the do rag. You can wear it. We'll work with you. You can wear do rag after school and have you after school, but during the day, I don't want it. Mm -hmm. You know, the hoodie got to go off too. Mm -hmm. Let's take it a day at a time. You know, he, he rebelled, you know, for the first two or three days. Mm -hmm. But that third day, he's like, you know what? All right. Because he, consistency. I didn't just say it one day and then let him rock because I didn't want to get into it with him. Right. Got to stay consistent. That's the only way we're going to get stuff done. Mm. Got to stay consistent. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I feel you. I feel you. So, like, um, say if somebody watches this video and want to help out, are people allowed to help out and send you things? Yeah. What? How can they reach you? Um, I have my Instagram is teacherman ninety one. Mm -hmm. um, T e a c h e r m a n nine one. Mm -hmm. And I have a tutoring page as well. Oh, what's good? Tutorman ninety one. Okay. So T well, you was born in ninety one or something? Yep. All right. All right. <laughs> T u t o r m a n ninety one. Okay. Yeah, okay. and I'm sure I could put them on. Uh, yeah, so you still kind of young. You twenty seven. Yeah, twenty eight. Okay, you twenty eight. Yeah, I'll be twenty nine in May. All right, so you young and you dedicating yourself yeah. to the youth like that, man. That's pretty good, man. Uh, what made you want to start? You know, dedicating your time to the youth and all that. Because you're not even thirty years old yet. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just finished my master's. Uh, finished my master's degree in 2018. From what what college you went to? Um, I went to Long Island University mm -hmm. for my undergrad. For my, I had a bachelor's in business administration mm -hmm. and a master's in arts of teaching from my, um, at Relay okay. Graduate School of Education. Okay. Yeah. Um, after 2014, mm -hmm. that was my senior year at Long Island University. Mm -hmm. um, I finished playing, and honestly, be honest with you. By my, I was a walk on. I don't know if you know what a walk on is. Now explain that. People walk know. on is someone who gets on the team mm -hmm. and there's no promise of a scholarship. And the mm -hmm. reason I had to walk on is because I had a, um, I didn't take my SAT seriously. So when, when you're an athlete, you have to take the SAT to academically qualify to receive an athletic scholarship. Mm -hmm. So I didn't take that seriously. I scored low, so I had to walk on. I walked on to two schools, American International College in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. I was there for a year and a half, my freshman year and half of my sophomore year. I didn't get a scholarship. I, I was on the team. Um, I played. I was undersized, so I didn't get a lot of opportunity to begin with. What sport? Uh, football. Okay. I played cornerback over there, mm -hmm. and then I transferred to Long Island University, and I had to walk on there as well. Mm -hmm. um, when I got there... I had a I had an academic scholarship, but it wasn't paying the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I had to pay room. I didn't ha I had to pay room board out of my pocket. Mm -hmm. So because of that, I had to sleep in one of my homeboys' room for a year. Mm -hmm. I, I lived out of a suitcase for a year, pretty much, mm -hmm. till I got my football scholarship to pay for everything. I was sneaking in the dining hall, um, 
and just get it how I can live, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and then I got my scholarship a year later. So I played my junior year, my senior year. And honestly, I didn't, I, I didn't have that, re I didn't have the resume to, to put, to give me a shot to play in the professional, the National Football League. Mm. I didn't have the resume. Then I had guys like have like, you know, eight interceptions and 100 tackles. I didn't have that type of resume. Mm. I played and I started my senior year, but I knew, I kept it real myself. Like for me to make it to the league at 5'7 and, and it didn't have the resume, it would be a long shot. Mm -hmm. So I got back home, you know how it is. You're 23, 23 now, you gotta pay rent. Mm -hmm. You know, I had to get, a, um, I had a internship and I personally trained until I, um, and while I was doing that, I did an internship. I was, um, I was a counselor pretty much mm -hmm. at this school, PS272 in Canarsie. Mm -hmm. And um, they was like, you're really good with the kids. And I also trained. Um, shout out to DeVal Ellis and Brian Ellis. They actually, they took me in um, and they showed me the ropes. Anything I needed help with, they helped me get a job. He actually paid, when I, when I went to Long University, I mm -hmm. owed $5,000 and he paid for it for me to get wow. back in school. Wow. So if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the internship he hooked me up with, the, the personal training, he gave me a space because I was an athlete, so I knew how to work out. Mm -hmm. I had to personally train to put extra money in my pocket to hold me over. Mm -hmm. Right. And because um, my internship was, uh, it was a stipend. We got a stipend once a month. Mm -hmm. We got paid once a month. And then the training put money in my pocket in the meantime, so I got paid. Mm -hmm. So that's how I was living <laughs> until I started um, teaching. Right. I, I'm a, I applied for the teaching fellows, and the teaching fellows is if you get in the program, they pay for half of your school in mm -hmm. grad school, and you teach and get paid full time salary. Mm -hmm. So I got into that. I did the training over the summer, and I got in. And it didn't really hit me until like my third year of teaching. Like, wow, like these kids really look up to me like a father figure. Mm -hmm. My first two, three years, I was just going to work and you know I was still doing what I'm doing now but I didn't see how much these kids looked up to me mm -hmm. until my third fourth year mm -hmm. and that's when I was like all right I'm gonna really go even harder with this and you know and I can make a name for myself not just being a teacher but get get my my message across to the masses through social media you know and to challenge teachers to be creative and find different ways to reach our kids, especially black and brown kids. Cause mm -hmm. these, these are the ones that's just giving up and dropping out. Mm -hmm. And I feel like because the, the teaching, the teaching race is not, is less diverse. They don't have no one to relate to. Mm -hmm. So they just giving up on school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's what's up, man. That's yeah. what's up, man. You know, it's a good. We need more brothers like you though, bro. Yeah. And you see the crazy shit, you reach out to a platform that you know the youth is watching. And right. listening to that's right. you really trying, bro. Yeah. Like you know what I'm saying? Right. It's like a lot of people don't even try to get, you know, do what you're doing. They may yeah. complain and talk junk, but you actually gotta have action behind yeah. the complaining and all that. A complain lot of people complain. You, right, right, exactly, <laughs> exactly. That's how I tell my kids, what you complain for? Oh, I hate this school, this school's trash. All right, so which how you gonna make this work for you? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know it's trash. Mm -hmm. All right, okay, cool. What, what's next though? Right, exactly. You, gonna, you know, you're gonna let that you gonna let that hold you back? You already you're already three, four years behind. Mm -hmm. You can't, you can't blame the school. The, the school is trash, and the teachers don't care about you. Don't let that affect you. Mm -hmm. like same thing, with you, same thing with you. You, you ain't get here to this point by just sitting on your ass. Nah, you gotta get up and you gotta go, get up man. And grind. Reach out to these artists. You know, DM. Some might some reply, some may not reply. Right. But you try. Right. You hit, you hit ten artists. Two gonna reply. Right. And when you get that two, more people gonna reach out to you. That's a fact. That's that's how it is. That's real stuff. Yeah. Real stuff. Right. Yeah, man. So we, we got about a half hour in. You know, talk, you know, to continue speaking yeah. and what, say whatever you got to say before we close out. You know oh, what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Um, a lot of people um, reach out to me through Instagram and um, through DM. Mm -hmm. And they ask me, um, you know, about different techniques and how you get your kids, um, you know, structured and everything. I don't, I know I post a lot of videos and it looks good on Instagram, mm -hmm. but it took me a long time to get these kids like that. Mm -hmm. I want to let people know, like, this is not a normal school. Mm -hmm. This is a transfer school where a lot of these kids didn't come with structure. Mm -hmm. You know, they, you know, they, um, they, they gave, gave up on school, and I had to get them to that point to, to even to come to school is a, it's a big, it's a big deal for them just mm -hmm. to come to school. So to come to school and get work done and sit in class for forty five minutes in a structured way, not you know wilding out and stuff like that. I had to get them to stop wearing do rags in class. Stop wearing hoods. 
Um, stop wearing hoods in the class. Come to school. Mm -hmm. um, and then and then start doing work and then produce something, produce quality work. It took time before I started recording these videos and showing the masses. It mm -hmm. took a long time. Every lesson is not going to be good. Mm -hmm. I have bad lessons. Mm -hmm. but when I have bad lessons, it's not always just the kids. The kids be wilding or the kids not, you know, acting right. Sometimes it's me. Mm -hmm. Maybe I didn't set these kids up for, to work independently because if the kids don't know what they're doing, what, they go, what else are they to do? Mm -hmm. They're going to talk. If they want the person next to them don't know what they're doing, mm -hmm. they're going to talk. So maybe it's, it's always not the kids. Sometimes it's me. Right. And I take ownership of that. Maybe I didn't structure that lesson the right way. Maybe I didn't put the right group together. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe I didn't explain it clear enough to them. Mm -hmm. And it takes time when I go home, I reflect on that. All right, I'm going to come back stronger tomorrow. I'm going to have a better day tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And that's all it is, really. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's what's up, man. You know, so like, you know, what if, you know, because you say you do two to work too. Yeah. Give them your, um, your information again one more time before we close um, up. So we could definitely... You know, somebody can hit you up because you want that care, man. So we yeah. got, you know, we got somebody that care for the youth. You know I'm saying y'all can tap in, man. Uh, to the man ninety one. Mm -hmm. That's the uh, you can hit me on that, or you can hit me on my other page, Teacher Man ninety one. But that's why I get most of my DMs about tutoring, mm -hmm. and then we work from there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's what's up, man. And uh, another thing about tutoring, I get a lot of people that ask about tutoring, and then we do one session, and then no, oh, they can't make it. In order for me and your, your child to make progress, we have to work consistently every, every week. Mm -hmm. It can't be one week here and then two weeks off and then one week on. It has to be consistent. And I, have, I get DMs at least messages about tutoring about every week. Mm -hmm. So I'm working with the people that want to get, want to get better. Right. I, just don't, I don't care about the money. Okay. To be honest with you, I do not care about the money. I care about progress. Damn. Real. All right, that's what's yeah. up, man. Yo, you know, we got a real one in the building. Y'all make sure y'all support the bro because, you know, y'all say it's a bunch of negative stuff. Like some of the older people's negative stuff. We have someone positive. Support when I have someone positive on. Right. Send this right. brother something, support. Because yep. then I'm only going to do negative because it seems like y'all support that more. Support the brother right here, man. I don't thank, feel like. Thanks, most... for, thanks for coming out, though, bro. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Not I don't here. feel like um, most of the stuff you post is negative. That's. The people that you interview, these artists, they stay in the trenches. Right. And you can only, you can only, you only become a product of your environment. Mm -hmm. So they trying to do music to get out the environment and do better. Mm -hmm. So how could you, how could you say someone is doing negative when that's all they know? Mm -hmm. That's pretty much, I get that from the kids. Right, right, You know right. what I mean? Yeah, they, they come some some curse and you know what I mean, all that. That's what they see in the neighborhood. That's what they see today. They get one positive image from me for 45 minutes. The rest of their day is negative. The other they, 23 hours and 15 minutes is right. negative. Do you hear negative. what he said? They go in the streets. They see people cursing. You know what I mean? They see people get robbed. Especially in the Bronx. He even get robbed. You see how that kid um, last year got stabbed up. I mean, mm -hmm. he, was, he wasn't even the right kid. Mm -hmm. You know, an old guy got stabbed for $50 the other day. Mm -hmm. it, it's wild out here. Right. That's all they see. Mm -hmm. They get... If if it, if this what I was doing for them was reinforced when they go home, it would be a different story. Mm. And it, the kids that I teach are no different from the people you interview. Mm -hmm. These rappers, you know, they trying to they in the studio, they working, they trying to get out their situation. Mm -hmm. You know, the way they to uh, the way they fund their music may not be you know ethical, mm -hmm. but I mean I can't really judge nobody. To be honest with you, I can't judge nobody how they make a dollar or if they. I respect that most of them, these young kids doing this music. Whether it's negative or positive, they trying to get out of this situation. Yeah. And you got most of the people you interview, they young. They like 18 to 23. Yeah, that's that's exactly the age. Right? You gotta you gotta give them time to grow. Growth mm -hmm. takes time. Look at Stoop Dog. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Look at look at all the gangster rappers back in the nineties and early two thousands. And look at them now. Look at right. T.I. Right. Look at Gucci. Right. That takes time. You gotta get these we don't even have the all right, yo. We don't have a lot of the black youth don't have the time to live to change. Look mm. at Nipsey. Mm -hmm. He he just started changing his ways and doing positive things in business, and then what happened? Facts. Get killed. And the sad part of that about well, that was they now giving him his flowers when he gone. He he got he got buried in his in the Staples Center, but never got to perform there. Mm. You know. Yeah, he big enough to get buried there though. You see the you see the game. He sold fifty eight thousand his first. Um, I think it was victory lap, and mm -hmm. it went platinum when he died. Mm. So, what's up? So they are people. 
when people are doing positive things and doing the right thing, it gets ignored mm-hmm. until unfortunately they die. You're mm-hmm. a legend when you die. Right. You know, so we got to give these young brothers time to live in order to see change. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's all I got to say on that. All right, definitely, yeah. definitely. All right, yo. Yo, my 